Good morning, Shady Grove and Facebook friends. I want to come to you once again in the name of the Lord and want to share with you um, the message that God's laid upon my heart. I have some few thoughts this morning and I hope uh, truly it'll be a blessing to all of you. Uh, but before we go any further, I just want to go, uh, go, to, the, go to prayer, um, to have prayer in the name of the Lord today and just to... Um, Thank the Lord for what He's done, for what He's going to do for us. I know many of you might be watching, might watch live here in just a little while, and some of you might view this later, but anyhow, we just want to be a blessing to the Lord. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer, and then I'll share with you a few verses, and then I'm going to give to you 10 things this morning quickly about the name of Jesus, okay? So let's pray together. Dear God, we love you. We thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for watching over us, helping us, and keeping us. Father in heaven, in your name. Jesus, we come before you. We ask you that you take the words that we speak today, that we give glory and honor to you, that we would see your face. Uh, Lord, high and lifted up, Lord, that we'd understand you, walk with you, and be with you. Lord, I pray that you would touch our country, um, bless every person, uh, Lord, in leadership, we can convict each one to make good decisions for all of us. And God, most of all, we'd be right with you, you'd be happy with us. Take the words we speak today, may they give glory to you, may we say or do nothing that will cause reproach to you or your kingdom. But I pray, God, most of all, you'd be happy with us. We need you today. We want you. Lord, without you, we're nothing. And we thank you for the word of God that is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, we love you. Thank you for our salvation. For these things, Christ, we ask in your name. Amen. So this morning, first off, I want to share with you uh, a few verses. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says this, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And then in second uh, or Philippians, Philippians chapter number two, um, verse number ten and eleven, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the Bible tells us here first that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. But I want to share with you another passage over in John fourteen. Listen closely. This one's very important. It's talking about when we're at the judgment seat, when we're standing before God giving account for our lives. Listen to what it says here. John 14, it's not in Revelation, it's John 14. It says this, uh, verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught for thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat, remember, of Christ. Those that are saved will stand before the judgment seat. Those that are lost will stand before the great white throne. Verse 11 says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. That one day when we stand before God, that when we're done and when we kneel before God, uh, he said, "We every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess uh, that Jesus is Lord. And so today I, I want us to remember that the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we hear this a lot. Um, but I want to share with you 10 things that Scripture tells us that we should do uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, so 10 things that we should do in the name of Jesus. I actually wrote this down for me in the name of Jesus for myself. Uh, so number one this morning, I want to share with you over in Acts chapter number three. Now, I'm not going to read all these passages. I'm going to share them with you. And you can look them up later if you'd like. You can fast forward, rewind, and all that good stuff. Uh, but this morning, uh, number one, Acts chapter number three, verse number six says this, that the apostles healed in the name of Jesus. You know, without Jesus Christ, uh, there's nothing. Uh, with him, uh, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Is Philippians uh, 4.13. But here, the apostles in Acts 3, 6, they healed people, healed others in the name of Jesus. And, you know, uh, today you say, well, preacher, we don't, or Benny, we don't heal, and we don't heal people. Uh, you know, you're right, we don't. And, you know, for that matter, we've got doctors and nurses and paramedics and uh, all kinds of, of uh, different entities in the medical field uh, that provide services for us. You know, but without Jesus Christ, without God's knowledge he's given to them, uh, Lord, it won't make a difference. And if there's anything we should do before we ever have anything done, as we ought to pray in Jesus' name, that we ask them to pray with them, and uh, that they would, uh, whatever they do to you, whatever they do for you, uh, that you'd ask God to help them in that. And so we should ask to be healed in the name of Jesus. Tell God that, Lord, we know that you've healed, our, you've made our bodies. We know that you've uh, created life, that you give life, that you give every breath and every heartbeat. <coughs> Excuse me. So in Acts chapter number three, verse number six, we find 
Uh, the example that the apostles healed in the name of Christ, that they'd done things in his name. Uh, number two, they healed bodies, people, uh, whether it be the, uh, the deaf to hear, uh, the lame to walk, the blind to see. They healed in Jesus' name. So number two this morning, I want to share with you in the name of Jesus uh, what the Bible tells us. is John chapter 2, verse uh, uh, 23. It tells us here that we should believe in his name. And whatever, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, we can know God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form and void. We know that. And then later on in the Word of God, uh, Jesus Christ came, He died on the cross for our sins, and He walked this earth, and that we should believe in His name. That whatever we do, and whatever we do, whenever we ask or make a prayer request, that we should believe in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not esteeming Jesus higher than God. Uh, for when the rich young ruler came down and uh, told Jesus, I know that thou art good, he goes, No, there's but one good. That's what Jesus Christ said. And he's talking about his heavenly Father, God Almighty. But so we, we should, uh, we should confess our sins in the name of Jesus. Believe in his name. And then number three this morning, Matthew chapter number 10, verses 32 and 33, that we should confess his name. Now that's not talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about going to confession or anything like that, but we should confess his name to others. We should share Christ with other people. We should let other people know uh, that Jesus Christ is alive and well. He's not on the cross. He's not a figure. He's not nailed to the cross. He's alive. He went to the tomb and God raised him from the grave. He gave up the ghost uh, on the cross of Calvary. He was taken to the tomb and then he took the blood uh, that he shed for us to the mercy seat and played it, uh, laid it on the throne before God. And so we should confess his name. And that's what we should confess is that Jesus is risen. Uh, not, thank God he died on the cross. But the most important part is that he rose from the grave. Uh, so those are the reasons why we can have power today in God's name. And, and it's not that we command power with a, a wand or a magic. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about at all today. It's the fact that we can have power, a touch of God in Jesus' name. Uh, so that we should, we can ask to be healed in his name. And you know, the Bible talks about uh, getting the elders of the church on those that are sick, uh, that, uh, that, that the one that is sick, uh, faith believing in Jesus. Jesus Christ, uh, that they go and you'd anoint them, lay hands on them, and pray over them in Jesus' name. And when you do that, because when we ask anything in his name for his honor and for his glory, he'll give it to us. That's what he says today. Uh, we should just, uh, he knows the true intentions of our heart. So it, this is not a wishing well. This is not a lamp that you can rub. Uh, this is Jesus Christ. He knows today. Uh, so we, we, should, uh, we should ask to heal others. Uh, that the others be healed in his name for his honor, for his glory. Number two, we should believe in his name because he's the one that died on the cross. He was an all-wise tempted, uh, but he never failed. Number three, uh, Matthew 10, verses 32 and 33, we should confess him before men. We should tell him that uh, he is the one true living God. He's the only God. He's the only one that can save us. He's the only way to heaven. Uh, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man come to the Father but by me. That's what he says today. Uh, we must ask ask anything in his name and he'll give it to you. Uh, and the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. On the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ today, that's what it means. Number four today, Acts chapter number two, verses 38, is one I like. That baptism uh, is in his name. You know, in the Bible, it uh, uh, talks about when uh, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And then when we baptize uh, our uh, at, at church, uh, those that come forward and accept Christ, believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for their sins. And that, that uh, the, you know, we talked about raised to walk in the newness of life. Uh, you know, and, and that's what it says. I baptize this my brother, or I baptize this my, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and and the Holy Ghost. That's what it's talking about. That we baptize in Jesus' name today. Uh, and that's what we ought to do. Anything we do, just like we shared with you first off, and whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. That's Colossians 3.17. And you know, the Bible tells us again, number one, we should be we should heal others in Christ's name, meaning we should pray for others. You find that in Acts chapter number 3. Believe in this name. We should confess his name. We should baptize in his name. Number five, the Bible tells us, Acts chapter four, verse 12, um, that salvation is in his name. 
There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That's what the Bible tells us. We should be saved from what today? We should be saved from hell, uh, from going there, from being there. You know, there's many things that uh, we are concerned with. There's a lot of things going on around us today. Uh, but you know, if we could ever just think about Jesus Christ, what He done for us, that God gave His Son and that Jesus gave us life on the cross of Calvary and what it really took, that the fact that He didn't give up on us. Uh, I, I guarantee you, uh, He didn't want to go to that cross. Remember when he was the garden of Gethsemane, and he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And, you know, it, it wasn't that he was bartering with God. It's, that, it's the fact that he wanted God to know that he was going to do whatever it was that he wanted him to do. That why? So he, that he, he could be right with God, and most of all, that God would be happy with him. And that's the point of this today, that we do anything we do in word or deed in the name of Jesus today, that we want to be right with him. And we want Him to be happy with us. So in the name of Jesus, that is the most powerful prayers that you can pray. And I'm not talking about right now prayers or any of that. And you can. There's not, there was a man uh, in the Methodist faith that he used to write down all of his messages before he preached them. And he would read the messages. But I'm going to tell you, you know what made the message? That he soaked it and saturated it in prayer with God. Back, uh, years ago, he done this. Uh, back before there was, uh, that they would congregate. This man would preach, and many, many souls came to know Jesus Christ and accept Jesus as his personal Savior because that man uh, had a touch of God. And that's what this is about, that we ask in Jesus' name. If you remember in the New Testament church that we come in Jesus' name, that we approach God in Jesus. We pray to Jesus, and Jesus goes and makes petitions uh, for us uh, to God Almighty in murmurings that we can't even understand. And that God speaks for us in that manner. So whatever we do, do it in word or deed. Do it in the name of Jesus today. That we do it for His honor and for His glory. So we should pray for others to be healed in His name. We should believe in His name. We should confess His name uh, before others. We should baptize others in His name. And we do that. And we should also have... There's only salvation in Jesus' name. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And then number six, we should, we should have life. We should walk through life in Jesus' name for Him, for His honor and for His glory. We should live a life that's pleasing to God, that when others see us, they would see Jesus. When others uh, look upon us, uh, surely they're going to see faults and failures. I know for me they do. Uh, you don't have to look far to see my faults and failures, but my prayer for Benny Romans is the fact that, God, when they look at me and they see me fall short, and Lord, they see me irritated or aggravated, they realize that, Lord, I I'm just a man. I'm in a robe of flesh. Uh, yes, I want to walk with you. Yes, I want to be right with you, but Lord, help me. Uh, Lord, give me a touch that only you can give. Give me the understanding I need to have. Help them to concentrate, Lord, on you. Not Help them not to see me, but Lord, see you in me. And Lord willing, at that moment, that time, that I won't fail the Lord. And that when I do, God, that they would just remember. Even like Moses, when he came down from off the mountain, he had the Ten Commandments in his hand. And Aaron and all the other leaders had got the children of Israel together. They had melted down all their precious gold and made a calf. And when they made that calf, they worshipped that calf. And he was just so disgusted, so disheartened, and so upset that he broke the Ten Commandments. He, you know, I'll leave you for just a little while to go be with the Lord. And when I come back, all we can do is see you worshiping this calf. And he broke the Ten Commandments. And so today, whatever we do, do in the name of Jesus today. That we should live life in his name for his honor and for his glory. You can find that in John chapter number 20, uh, verses 30 and 31. That we should live in Jesus' name. Uh, that when we wake up, we ought to uh, we ought to give him our first breath. The Bible talks about the the first fruit of thine own increase. I realize that's talking about our money, and that we should give a, a tithe or or you, uh, you want to talk about it in in the New Testament. So give as God has blessed you. But He said the first fruit of thine own increase we ought to give. And you know what I believe for myself. Um, uh, Benny Romans that we ought, that I ought to give the first fruit of my own increase. That's not just my money. Uh, that's my first breath. When I wake up in the morning, I want—I love my wife and I love my family. I love my kids. And they get up early just after us. And uh, But my first thoughts and my first breath, and I'm not being self-righteous, I give them to the Lord. I want Him to know that. I thank Him for this day. Before I can love my family the way I want to, and before God would be pleased with me too, um, I have to uh, thank Him first. And it's not a have to, it's that I want to, because I realize uh, that in a moment's notice uh, that anything can happen as good as you 
might think you might have be in the abilities that he's given you. Any moment, anything can happen. He can take your breath, your heartbeat, whatever it might be. And surely we want to thank you for each one. So I want him to know that my first one today, that whatever happens, whatever comes my way, that my first ones are for him, that I give to him, and that I want to be pleasing to him, even though I fall, I fall short, and even though that I'm not perfect, and even though that I have mistakes, and, and I don't like them, and I don't care for them, I despise to mess up. I can't. I have a hard time with it, but I know that I'm not perfect, but I want him to know that I'm doing my best, and that I'm trying with him, and so we should live life in his name. And ask him uh, for himself. Uh, give your first moments of each day and your first thoughts, your conscious thoughts to him each day. Number seven, in his name, we should, in his name, uh, there is a name above every name. As I told you before in Philippians 2 uh, and 9 and 10, you can find this, that there's no other name. It's a name uh, above every name. Jesus Christ uh, is a name above every name. It's God's only begotten Son. The Bible tells us we can come boldly before the throne of grace because Jesus died on the cross. And when He did, the veil of the temple was rent. So now we can approach God in His presence. Remember the Old Testament? Those priests had to put that garment on of white. And there were other priests and only one, the holy, uh, uh, the, the high priest could only go back and, and take the blood and lay it on the altar. And then they would put bales on the bottom of his garment and a rope tied to his leg uh, so that if he, he was not right with God and he was to fall short and die while he was back there because he had, had unconfessed sin or he, God was not happy with him or he did not do what God asked him to do, that when the bells quit ringing, they would take the rope and pull the man out, uh, out of the holiest of holies, and then God would choose another man. But every name, there's no other name uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. So listen, number one, uh, we must ask for others because we don't heal today. Uh, we don't have that power. But the apostles healed in Christ's name. So we can ask for God to heal in his name. Number two this morning, John 2, uh, we should believe in his name. Number three, we should com uh, should confess his name before men. We find that in Matthew 10, verse 32. Number four, we should baptize in his name. And we do that. Uh, salvation, number five, is in his name only today. Uh, that's Acts chapter number four. Number six, life in his name. We can find that in John 20, verse 30 and 31. Number seven, the one we're on, uh, uh, his name is above every name in Acts chapter number two. There's no other name. Do you realize that uh, in, the old, in the Old Testament and even today in the Hebrew culture to Israel, um, uh, that 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 there's this name that they have for Jesus, and that, you know it's trans all of our English is translated uh, when we want to read their text from that language, Hebrew, and and we get all that. And I'm not into that today. I I, I just don't. That's not the message, okay? But for them, the name of Jesus was Yahweh. And do you realize that even today that is such a sacred name to them? They have other names, like you might call your father. You, he's father. Uh, you might call him dad or, or, or whatever you might want to, whatever, or daddy or so on. You understand. Uh, so there was a name that they don't even speak much today. There was only one time a year that they would say that name, Yahweh. And that was one time. And some even then, before God, they would kneel and pray before God. And they would not even say that name as in reverence. That they, they worshipped him so much. They loved him so much. He was so sacred uh, to to them and so meaningful to them that that he that they would not even speak his name, and that they were in so uh, in all of him. If they would use had other names like Jehovah Jireh, the God of this, and, and you would understand this. But Yahweh was such a sacred name, and you know the name. There's no other name uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. No other name above any other name other than Jesus Christ, and we ought to confess that to Him today when we pray, bow our heads, Lord. I know there's nobody. Any better than you. Lord, I know there's nobody any more perfect than you. No other name higher than his name other than Jesus Christ. Number seven. That's more. Number eight. Uh, prayer should be made in his name. And I believe that with all my heart. Any prayer we pray ought to be in Jesus' name. And I'm, I'm guilty often of saying when I pray a prayer for uh, for anybody that it's, it's so very important. Every prayer we pray should be important. But Lord, I, I tell the Lord, Lord Jesus, I ask in your name. Lord, I beg in, in your name, Jesus. And I, you know, there's a prayer that uh, I, I think is important to me. It, you know, even talking to you or somebody else, if we say, uh, if we call somebody um, a derogatory name or we, or we want their attention, that's what I'm trying to say. You want to get God's attention. And we want to come humbly before the throne of grace today. You know, I, when I bow my head, I tell him, Lord God in heaven, maker and creator of this world, giver of life, maker of everything. Lord Jesus, in your name, I ask it. 
Lord, would you allow me to come into your presence? Lord, would you hear my prayer? Lord, because they're important to me. And Lord, I realize that others have asked us to pray for them. And church or friends, we ought to consider when people ask us to pray for them that it's important. And you ought to count that an honor today that they feel like that they could, you can get a hold of the Lord for them and on their behalf. And for his honor and for his glory that you're asking uh, the, 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 uh, a God that's greater than any other God, no other God. Greater than him. There's no other God but him today. Uh, that we ask in his name that we come before him and that we live a life that's pleasing to him that we can have a, immediately can enter into his presence at a moment's notice that we could ask, Lord, would you allow me to come into your presence, Lord, that you can hear my prayer uh, on their behalf, Lord. Lord, in your name I ask you that we ought to pray in his name. Don't, don't, don't take that lightly this morning. You can find that in John chapter number 14, uh, verse 13 this morning. And then verse, and then number nine this morning, uh, Christians, we ought to gather in his name. We ought to gather in his name. He said, where two or three are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. You can find that in Matthew chapter number 18, uh, verse number 20. And so we ought to gather in his name. You know, there's lots of people, they gather. Uh, for a lot of reasons, you know, at the ball games, and I'm not knocking ball games, but we gather for the ball game. It's okay, remember that. And so when we go to the church house, we ought to come to the church because we want to worship Him. We gather in His name. We worship in His name. The Bible says, God tells us if we're going to worship Him, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth, that we should gather in His name. Worship in His name, nothing else. Not for any other reason, not to hear the preacher. There's nothing wrong with coming to hear the preacher. Uh, that's fine. You ought to support your pastors, your preachers, and uh, your Sunday school teachers. You support your church. Uh, but today, we ought to gather together in His name. In His name, nothing else. For God's honor and for God's glory, that we worship Him. We ought to be so concerned with ourselves that we want to be right with Him and Him be happy with us that we worship Him in His name. Number nine, you can find that again, Matthew 18, verse 20. And then number 10 this morning, you can find in Acts chapter number five, verse 41, uh, that many and we should suffer in his name. And he said, what do you mean suffer? I'm not saying you should suffer. I don't want to suffer, uh, but I'm just telling you today that when uh, people say things or uh, do things uh, or they uh, they might be offensive to you, it might hurt your feelings, whatever it might be that we remember uh, that we ought to think before we speak, anger and sin not. Uh, we ought to uh, 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 try to hold our tongue if we can. Now, I'm not. There's also words called admonishing, and, and that we ought to, uh, you know, speak for God and tell the truth. And I, I'm I'm for that, and I'm with all that. But we ought not to be uh, quick to do those things. We ought to just be. Uh, uh, I'm not saying uh, coexist. I'm, I'm whatever. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying today. We ought to 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 live by God's word, and if God says it, we should do it. If God's word wants it, we should do it. If God asks us, we should do it today. That's what I'm saying today. That we live by God's word, that God said it, and we why we do what we do? Because God asked us to. That should be our reasoning today. Uh, that we should uh, suffer so, uh, meaning uh, that we, we want to take up for ourselves. Vengeance is mine, saith Lord, and I get that. That's a big deal today. Uh, but God give us the grace. God give us the mercy. God give us the things today uh, to be the people that God wants us to be because we ought to live for Him. So listen to me in the name, in the name of Jesus, that whatsoever we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God, to the Father by Him. That's Colossians 3.17. And remember, I want to share with you again, Philippians 2. He said that every name should bow. Every, uh, every name, that at the name of Jesus, that every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. That's what he tells us here in Philippians. But John chapter 14 is talking about the judgment seat of Christ. That when we all reach heaven and we all meet God and He's judging us because it tells us in John 14, 10 through 11 and 12 that at that time, that every Every knee shall bow. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. In the name of Jesus today. Let me share with you these ten things again, once again. Ten things the Bible tells us that in the name of Jesus. Number one, that the apostles healed in His name. We should pray for others to be healed in Jesus' name. You can find that Acts chapter number 3, verse 6. Number two, uh, we should believe in Jesus' name. There's no other name we, we should ever believe in uh, that for, uh, for us, for His honor, for His glory. Uh, it should, uh, John chapter number two, verse number three, we should believe in His name. Number three, we should confess 
Jesus' name. Matthew chapter number 10, verses 32 and 33. We should confess His name before others. Let others know who Jesus is. Tell the world that Jesus saves. The death, burial, and the resurrection. Most of all, the resurrection. Because that's what seals the deal. And this morning, we should also baptize in Jesus' name. And we do this morning. And then number five this morning, uh, we should have salvation in Jesus' name. There's no, other, uh, there's no other way to heaven other than Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. But you can find that in Acts chapter number four, verse number 12. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And then number six this morning, we should live life. In Jesus' name. What we should live for. That's the reason we should do. I understand we've got bills to pay and things like that. But most of all, and whatever we do, in what we do, that God shines through us. We have a light that lives within us. If we accept Christ as our personal Savior, that He lives within our hearts and within our minds, that when we do what we do, that others see Him instead of us. Number seven this morning, in His name, there's no other name. above. His name is above every name. This morning, Philippians 2, 9 and 10. And then number 8 this morning, uh, we should uh, prayer should be made in His name. That in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. That's what we always end our prayer. But what about, have you ever thought about uh, beginning your prayer, Lord Jesus, in your name? I ask this because He tells us. We ask anything in His name, He'll give it to us. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For he that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth the him that it knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. You can find that in Matthew chapter number 7 this morning. But for number 9 this morning, I want to share with you, Christians, we should gather in his name. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he said he'd be in the midst. He'd be in the midst. Number 10 this morning, there was many and some did suffer in Jesus' name. And today we ought to think about before we react, uh, or we ought to think about before we act, how we react is who lives within us today. Who lives within us today? One verse I want to share with you and I'm going to be done. Romans 14, verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or what dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's if you're saved. If you're not, you'll stand before the great white throne. Verse 11. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12, so then every one of us shall give an account to himself, to God. Think about this today. Think about this. In the name of Jesus, God bless each and every one of you. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Think about these things that you can do in his name. I've shared 10 of them with you. There's many more. I love you today. And I, again, I hope this has been a help to you. That's the only reason why I'm doing this. I uh, appreciate Shady Grove and all my Facebook friends. We love every one of you. I pray for each of you today. And let's go to Lord in prayer and then I'll be done. You can listen to this at any moment, anytime. That's the great thing about this. So uh, some things you don't want to hear, you can just fast forward. And those that you want to remember, you just look back up. Okay, so let's pray together. Almighty God, we love you and we thank you for your many wonderful love and blessings. Thank you, God, for waking us up. Lord, thank you for the very breath we breathe. Lord, the very heartbeat that's in our chest. Thank you for our family and our friends. Lord, thank you for America that we live in. I pray, God, you touch our leaders and convict our hearts, Lord, to make good decisions that would impact us all. And Father, I pray you'd help each of us as Christians to walk, uh, Lord, circum circumspectly to you. And God, that you'd be happy with us. God, most of all, we could be right with you. I pray that you'd help us as we go out into the world today. Uh, Lord, that you protect our families and bring us back home safely, that others would see you in us. And Lord, I might ask, Lord, something about you that, Lord, we could share you with them. Lord, I pray you take the word of God. May we apply it to our lives. Lord, may you settle it within our uh, within our bodies. Uh, Lord, it could, uh, Lord, it would guide us and lead us. Uh, Lord, a path to our feet. Uh, uh, Lord, a light to our uh, uh, a path in us. Lord, that we could walk the right way, go the right way. We need you today. We love you. Most of all, we thank you. For these things, Jesus, we ask in your name. Amen. Facebook, we'll see you again next time. It'll be next Wednesday, about uh, between 6.10 and 6.15. And uh, we just want to, this is what we're doing uh, right now, uh, a Wednesday morning message. But we love each of you. You can rewind and fast forward. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week.